My friends, Jack, Emily, Mike, and I were always looking for thrills. We loved adventure and were regulars at various quests and attractions. Every new challenge was a chance to prove to ourselves and others that we could overcome any obstacles and fears. So, when each of us received a mysterious email inviting us to a groundbreaking quest room, we didn't hesitate to accept the challenge. The email was strange. It looked like a regular invitation, but there was something unsettling in its words that gave us goosebumps. Looking for thrills? Ready to face the toughest challenges you've ever experienced? Then we are waiting for you. A test on the edge of reality, where your fears become your game. We decided it was just a clever marketing ploy to attract attention and laughed it off. We were confident and believed we had seen everything the entertainment industry could offer. On the appointed day, we gathered at an old abandoned building on the outskirts of the city. The windows were boarded up, and it seemed like no one had been there for a long time. The air was filled with the smell of dampness and mold, as if time itself had enveloped this place in its invisible web. A sign reading, Quest Reality, hung above the door, faded by time. It looked like part of the attraction, inviting us into a world of illusions and mysteries, promising the unknown and the terrifying. Jack, our leader and main thrill-seeker, stepped inside first. His energy and thirst for adrenaline always led us forward. We followed him, excited and full of enthusiasm, not knowing what awaited us ahead. As soon as the door slammed shut behind us, everything changed. Time seemed to stop, and the walls began to move like they were alive. The air became dense and viscous, as if we had entered another dimension where its own laws applied. Darkness enveloped us, and for a moment, we were confused, as if the world around us was an illusion created to scare and confuse. Then dim lights flickered on, illuminating a room with dusty mirrors and old dolls standing in the corners, silent witnesses to others suffering. Their eyes seemed to follow our every move, hiding a sinister glee. A cold mechanical voice came from speakers hidden in the walls. Welcome to the quest, Boundaries of Reality. Are you ready to face your worst nightmares? Can you make it out alive? We exchanged glances and confusion and bewilderment flashed in each of our eyes. It seemed like part of a scenario devised by the organizers, but something in the voice made our hearts clench with fear. It wasn't just a greeting, but a real threat hanging in the air like an invisible sword ready to strike us at any moment. The first trial began immediately. The walls started moving, and soon we found ourselves in different rooms, cut off from each other like pieces of a puzzle that couldn't fit together. It all seemed too real to be a game. It felt like the walls were breathing, and time was flowing differently. Every moment was filled with tension, and we felt fear starting to seep into our consciousness, filling it with sticky anxiety. I was placed in a room where shadows on the walls began to move and come to life. In the darkness, I heard the rustling of wings and the whistling of wind, as if something was flying around me, invisible in the dim light. It was a nightmare from my childhood, a fear of the dark and what might be lurking in it. I always feared that something in the darkness was waiting to do harm. Now that fear had become reality. Every movement of the shadows intensified my fear, making it almost tangible. I tried to stay calm, peering into each shadow, hoping to find a clue or something that could stop this eerie spectacle. But my hands were shaking, and my thoughts were in disarray. Time passed too quickly, and my heart pounded in my chest like a drum, setting the rhythm of my fear. I knew that if I didn't find a way out, it would be the end. Panicking, I started looking for any hint, trying not to succumb to the horror. Jack found himself in another trap. He was placed in a glass room where water started rising slowly. Jack always feared drowning. It was his most profound and long-standing fear. Since childhood, he avoided water because he nearly drowned in a lake once. Now his fear became reality as the water rose higher, filling the room. Jack tried to remain calm, but panic gripped him with every passing moment. He began searching for an exit or anything that could stop the water from coming in. But time was short, and with each minute, his breathing became more difficult. The water was already up to his chest, and Jack felt his fear paralyze his mind, making his heart race faster. He tried to find some clue to survive, but the fear of drowning increasingly filled his consciousness, threatening to become reality. Emily, on the other hand, ended up in a room filled with moving dolls. 
She had always been afraid of dolls, especially those that looked too lifelike. As a child, she watched a movie where dolls came to life and began hunting the characters, and that fear took root deep in her mind. The dolls were everywhere in the room, and they started moving whenever she took a step. They whispered something unintelligible to her, as if trying to implant their thoughts into her mind. She tried to keep her sanity and not panic, but the dolls continued to follow her, surrounding her and leaving no way out. Her heart pounded wildly in her chest, and a rising noise rang in her ears. It seemed time slowed down, and every breath was a struggle. She remembered how, as a child, she once stayed in a room with dolls that began to fall from the shelves, and that fear flooded over her again with relentless force, paralyzing her will and mind. Mike ended up in an old theater. Dim stage lights illuminated an empty stage, and the air was thick with the scent of dust and old costumes. Mike always feared being on stage with all eyes on him. This place was his personal hell, where every rustle and creak heightened his sense of vulnerability and loneliness. He was always afraid of being the center of attention, terrified at the thought of everyone watching him, waiting for mistakes. Every step in this place was a struggle. Every sound made him flinch. Mike heard invisible spectators whisper his name, and with each step, it seemed like someone was watching his every move. In the silence of the empty theater, applause and whistling echoed as if the stage came to life, trying to trap him in its web. Each of us was fighting our demons, and every moment felt like an eternity. I tried with all my might not to succumb to fear, praying the shadows wouldn't engulf me completely. Time felt endless, and my muscles began to give out. I knew if I gave in to panic, I would perish. Fear pressed down on me but I struggled with all my might to maintain my sanity and not succumb to terror. Somewhere far away, I heard Jack scream, then silence. It was the moment his fears finally overtook him. Emily, surrounded by the moving dolls, tried to find a way out, but eventually panic swallowed her. Mike, trembling with terror on the stage, found a way out of his room only to face a reality his mind could no longer bear. His eyes were filled with horror and his hands shook like a person who had confronted his nightmares. When I finally made it out, exhausted and worn out, I saw only Mike. He sat on the floor, hugging his knees and rocking back and forth, as if trying to escape this nightmare. The rest had perished, their worst nightmares becoming deadly traps. The two of us survived, but it was a hollow victory. We weren't just friends who had completed a quest. We were people who had a part of their soul taken away, dragged into a game we couldn't win. This experience left an indelible mark on us, turning into a burden we would carry with us for the rest of our lives. We exited the building and the evening sun blinded us. The voice from the speakers whispered one last time, thank you for playing, we hope you enjoyed it. But we knew that this experience had left its mark on us forever. The quest room reflected our worst nightmares and only the two of us survived. But in reality, none of us returned unchanged. Even freedom brought no relief because every step reminded us of the loss and fear we had experienced. As we walked down the street, the shadows of sunset fell upon us as if marking the end of our journey and the beginning of a new one, full of doubts and fear of what might await us around the next turn of fate. We carried with us the memory of those we lost and the fears that would never leave us in peace. That day changed us forever, leaving scars that would accompany us to the end of our days. We knew life would never be the same, and each new day would be a test of endurance. 